Having my home as my creative space for me is a must. Living in London is not cheap, rents are crazy high, and my perfect solution to afford a photography studio was to build it my own in every flat I moved to during all these years. I don't live in a big place at all, it's a small studio, so it doesn't matter if you live in a small place, by the end of this video you will be able to set up your own photography studio for such an affordable price. Having your own photography studio at home is one of the best things you can ever do for so many reasons. First of all, it's super affordable and you don't have to rent external studios. If you are a beginner, you can practice all you want whenever you want from the comfort of your home, you can do also professional photography work and photography becomes your lifestyle even if you are not a professional yet. I personally love waking up every morning with all my creative mess around me because it really reminds me who I am, what I love doing and how grateful I am to have my passion as my full-time job. I did a video time ago about how to build a home photography studio in a small place and you guys loved it, but because of that video you guys sent me so many questions on Instagram, so I decided to do this video to go more in depth about the gear I recommend, which one is better for the price, the differences between flash and continuous light, the size of softboxes and what you should get depending on your needs and your studio space. By the end of this video, you're gonna get a perfect idea of what you need spending the very minimum. And I will also show you towards the end a few extras that you can add, also very affordable, you don't need them, but they're gonna be very affordable for you to spice up your studio and make it way more creative. So this is my home photography studio and I do here all my portrait photography work, all my fashion photography work and product photography for my own projects or for clients. And if you follow my channel and my Instagram account, you know I love self-portrait photography and I do have quite a few videos already on my channel about this and I'm gonna keep them coming because I always encourage you to do it with yourself. So many of you tell me like you are not very photogenic. It doesn't matter because you don't need to post the pictures anywhere. It's just to experiment. If you get yourself something like this, and I promise you, you can afford it, you're gonna be able to experiment with yourself without having the pressure of being with someone looking at you or looking at your mistakes. I don't know, and on top of that, you don't need to hire any model or use any model to experiment with if you are shy or you don't like it. You can use yourself and just experiment with lighting to learn. I've learned this way portrait photography and now I do it professionally. So guys, this is gonna be super, super interesting, this video. I'm gonna link all the gear below, but if I forget something, please let me know. At least for now, I can reply to every comment, and you know I always do on Instagram and here. So if I forget any link or just you have questions about any gear I'm not gonna name, just let me know and I will happily reply to you. The best backdrop and the best holder. I talked about this time ago. The best hack I can tell you is to buy a core time pole from Ikea is under eight pounds guys and it comes with the two hooks and the bar and then the only thing you have to do is hang your backdrop so this is super super cheap and you save a lot of space with this so i moved many times in london trust me like i don't even know how many times maybe eight nine times ten times i don't know crazy and i always mounted my studio everywhere i went and guys this is a super hack if you have just a bedroom because you save the space of the backdrop holders so this is super good, but if you can, it's nice to have as well backdrop holders. I personally have, not here anymore, they are in Spain, and they are quite expensive because they are from Manfrotto, but I'm gonna link below some very affordable as well if you want to have them. It's quite handy because if you want to carry the studio somewhere else or you wanna shoot outdoors and you need natural light, you can take in the back the backdrop holder and the roll and you can shoot whatever you want. You can even go to the house of the client and shoot over there. So it's good to have it as well, but if you don't have the budget, the court and pole is such a nice hack. So this would be it regarding holder. Regarding material, so many of you are asking me on Instagram about this, and guys, I know there is many materials, but for me, my favorite one is paper. It's not gonna reflect the flash, and it doesn't crease. So many of you are telling me you bought fabric ones, and then you have to be ironing the backdrop. You wanna take pictures to experiment, but then you have to iron the backdrop. I'm sorry, that's not for me, so for me, paper. And regarding sizes, I talked about this time ago as well, there is three sizes, but the most common is the tiny one for portrait, that for me is too tiny, and there is another one which is huge, so if you live in a big place, you are lucky, you can get that one still, but then there is one called car size, which is the one I use, the one I have behind, 
And for me, it's the perfect size for portrait and horizontal pictures. So that one is the one I love the most. And as well about colors, this is up to you and depending on your budget. You can buy like a lot of colors if you want to experiment with because it's amazing. I would love to have many. But if you want something simple to start with, for me, black and white. And guys, if you have a white wall like I do, I do have the white backdrop to do e-commerce shots. So you do e-commerce shots, it's good to have white as well. But if you have a white wall and you don't do e-commerce, you don't need it. You can roll up the black backdrop and sew the white wall. And with the white wall, you have already the white color. So you would need just one paper backdrop. So this is very good. And a little trick, if you want to shoot with paper backdrops to save money and save the length of the paper backdrop, put tape under the sole of the models or yourself because this way you're not gonna make it dirty and it's gonna last way longer. I used to do this in many studios in London and in my own studio. I promise you that my paper backdrops, they last forever because I take care of them. So this is a very good hack as well. The most affordable lighting. Something I want to tell you is that I own a continuous light and a flash. The continuous light is very good for video as well. So if you are into video, continuous light is perfect. It's the one I'm using right now. I will show you later. But then you have to choose which in flash or continuous light and see which one is best for you. So I would say, for example, in my opinion, I prefer flash. And I prefer flash because I shoot portrait photography and I like my models to move a lot, so they appear more natural. And when they are moving, the flash freezes the movement. And this is key. Because otherwise, we continuous light because they are way less powerful. If they are moving, I have to shoot very fast and normally I'm gonna lose a lot of light, guys. So if you are expecting to do something like this, you're gonna have to get a flash. For product photography, for example, if you shoot with a tripod at a lower shutter speed, you can still use continuous light. You can shoot slower, so there is more light into the sensor. But still, if you want those kind of product shots where the product is flying or is splashing water, something creative, those pictures, they are done with flash as well. So I would say, get a flash. I got both because I do video and sometimes I use for photography as well the continuous light because it's more than enough for product photography. So this is entirely up to you. But for example, if you set up the studio in a dark place like a garage or a dark bedroom, sometimes continuous light is not enough and you're gonna have to be very close from the lighting. So my favorite is flash and they are the same price as the one I'm gonna show you. I do have to say that for beginners, continuous light is very good because you see right away how the picture is gonna look like. While with flash, you're gonna have to guess, you have to put the settings, and sometimes can be scary, but trust me, it's not. I don't have a light meter, I've never thought I needed it, and I manage. Now, obviously, I know better the settings because I have a lot of practice. But guys, at the beginning, trial and error, and that's how you learn. So, flash is not that scary, but if it scares you, continuous light is a very good choice. My flash is this one from Newer, and guys, I can promise you, this one is the most affordable you're gonna find out there and it does the job perfectly. I've been the whole year shooting with this one and I already tested it and I'm very happy with it. Another thing to mention is that Newer and Godox are from the same manufacturer, so if in the links they take you to Godox, don't be scared because I think they don't sell it under Newer name anymore, I think it's Godox, so that's something to take into account as well. The continuous light is this one from Godox and it's also super affordable. It's actually the same price as the flash, so this is very good because you're gonna decide which one to take regarding your needs, not because of the price, because many times we do that. It's like, okay, I need this, but oh, it's too expensive and this is cheaper. No, this is actually good because you're gonna be able to choose flash or continuous light, not regarding the price. So choose wisely regarding your needs. The good thing about this light as well is that it comes with a remote control, so you can switch it off and switch it on from here, which is very handy. <laughs> and then also you can control the power with the remote control. So many times you're gonna be shooting and you don't wanna reach for the light because it's not that accessible. Sometimes it can be very high or far away and you don't wanna have to be going. So this is quite handy, I really like it. And then I really wanna mention as well, again, you're gonna have all the links below. I'm gonna put most affordable ones for those who don't have the budget. And then I'm gonna put more expensive gear if you wanna invest in quality. The one I have in Spain and the one I know I like and I trust. The best soft boxes. If you're a portrait photographer like me, you should take something rounded because you're gonna get the cat's light in the eyes of your subject and it's more natural on the eyes. For those who don't know, cat's light is the reflection of the octopus or whichever reflector you are using in the eyes of the model. So if it's rounded, it's more natural. Should you take a big one or a small one? I do own both. 
and they work perfectly. I would say if you have a small studio or you are in a bedroom, you can take this one. This one is very tiny, it's 65 centimeters of diameter and it's very tiny. It's super handy and even if you are in a bedroom, it's very, very good because it doesn't take too much space. It falls like super good, like an umbrella. I took it many times to businesses to do headshots and it's very handy because it's tiny and you can put it in the back and that's it. So that one is very good for everyone. And I would say the difference would be that this one is better for portraits or half body even, but normally it centers more the light wherever you focus it on. And then I have a huge one, which is 89 centimeters of diameter. I'm recording with it right now. And the big difference is that you can lead more of your subject. So if you want full body pictures, this is better because it's bigger. But at the same time, it's very good for the skin. As bigger the surface of the reflector, the smoother the skin. So this is very good because at the beginning when you don't know, you may use a very harsh light or with no reflector or with a very tiny one and the skin doesn't look good. So it looks better when it's big. It diffuses more the light. So I love both, so I couldn't decide. But to be honest, I've been working many years with just a beauty disc and it does the job. A beauty disc is normally this size as well and it's very good for portrait photography. So this is entirely up to you. As you can see, the big one takes so much space in my studio. It looks a bit cluttered, but at the same time, I don't regret because it's very, very good and I'm very happy with it. Extras. So I'm gonna show you a few things very affordable as well, but you don't need. So you really don't have the budget, you don't need these things. But they're gonna make your life easier and they're gonna give you so much room for creativity. And they are all super affordable as well. The first thing would be this, a tether cable. And this is super useful when you are shooting fashion photography, portrait product, because you can connect your camera into your computer and you're gonna be able to see the pictures on the go, how they are coming out. And many times as well, because you connect it through Lightroom or Capture One, whichever you prefer, you can preview a preset. And this is very useful because if you have a preset in mind you want to apply for the photo shoot, you can preview it when you are shooting. So this is very useful to be honest because the little monitor of the camera is not reliable many times, is maybe brighter or darker or you don't see if the picture is focused. I don't even know how many times I experienced this. I do a photo shoot and I'm super happy I'm going home and then I check the pictures in the screen in the computer and I'm like, what the hell? I have so many things out of focus. So the tether cable, fix it. And if you are shooting outdoors, so many photographers, they take the tether cable and a laptop. So it's very professional and you can see the pictures bigger. So very inexpensive as well. Then the second thing I wanna talk about is a reflector. I'm sure you heard about this. This is super, super cheap and very tiny as well. So this is very useful for people who use as well just one light in the studio. So if you don't have budget and you have one light, this is gonna be super useful and very cheap to put it in the opposite side of the light to fill shadows of your subject. So you have a few colors. This expands this way, and you can reflect the light silver, it changes a bit the color, black, or if you open it, you can reflect white. The most popular is the white, to be honest. You have it here, it's the white. This for outdoors is very useful because when it's sunny, guys, if you are shooting with harsh light, this is very useful. It's nice to have an assistant who is actually reflecting the light of the sun. So this is very inexpensive and you can use it in a studio or outdoors. I actually used it not long ago with a product photography shoot I did. I was shooting with my camera, with my Canon camera, and the logo, because I was shooting moody pictures, didn't get the light of the key light in the other side. So I put the reflector and it reflected a bit the light of the flash and illuminated the logo. So those little details always count. If you follow my work, you know that I love shooting with RGB lights. Guys, for me, this is a must in the studio and mostly if you shoot product photography or portrait photography because you can be super creative because you can use all the RGB colors of the wheel so you can get super creative if you own a set of two. I have a set of two from Newer, but it comes together, both of them, both of the lights and they come as well with light stands. You can see here, so it's a set and it comes with a carrier bag, which is super useful and they are super affordable. For me, it's a must for my studio. I couldn't live without them. I shoot a lot with them. And as you can tell as well on my video, you can see I use one orange for my guitar. So the video is more interesting. The other one, I'm not using it right now. But guys, for video light and for photography, as you can see in these shots here, you can get super, super, super creative. And I really, really love them. Conclusion, if you don't have the budget and you are really struggling, 
get at least one key light, which can be the continuous light or the flash, and take as well one light diffuser. You cannot get a flash or a continuous light and don't get a diffuser because otherwise it's pointless. The light is gonna be very harsh. It doesn't matter which kind of photography you do, it's not gonna work. So one light and one diffuser. And then with time, you can buy a paper backdrop. With that, you can have like your tiny creative space at home. And it doesn't matter if you're in a bedroom because it's all of this is done for a tiny place as well. By the way, there is a new feature on YouTube and it's a button called Thanks Under the Videos. I think this is great to support your favorite channels. So many of us, we take weeks to do a video. We really struggle. This button allows us to receive a bit of support. So thanks YouTube for that. And get a home photography studio because it's gonna be like your new baby. It's like a new toy to experiment with, to learn more and get creative. So yes, guys, I really hope to see you soon and big love to everyone. Just the... Bleh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Extracts. Backdrop. Oh wow, massive spider there. Ah, it's so huge.